welcome to my channel welcome to another online um reveal of the just cross stitch magazine this is for the april edition uh this is a magazine that you can subscribe to online for 20 dollars a year and then you get all access to the back issues and everything else it's really handy having these online you can actually um pull and um pick and pull pieces out from the pdf and use them on something like pattern keeper as um, a pattern that you can use um in saying that if you are new to my channel and you haven't already subscribed subscribed please subscribe please ring the bell for notifications of when i do any more videos and um come and join me and see what we get up to so this is the april edition i know it's a little bit late we are now in may but um i thought uh, I was a little bit behind things got just on top of me and it just didn't get shown so I have this magazine here it's got a well I thought it was a robin maybe not it's on and I am magnolia or something we'll find out all right I'm going to actually zoom in on me in case we get to patterns and when it comes to the picture I will show you what we've got so we've got Um, goodness I clicked on something that I shouldn't have okay um, we have a sampler we have the signs of spring so that's the image that we're looking out for um, from that front page oh we got Paddy's Day stuff cool uh, there's some bunnies okay here's the first one Ooh, this is nice. All right, you ready? These are the language of flowers. Now, stroll through a lovely garden using your needle and thread with this beautiful floral design that describes the symbolism of each bloom. So you've got the crocus, which is cheerfulness. Begonia, be careful. Narcissi, which is for happiness. A bit like the daffodil, but not. Forget me not for loyalty. Lilac, do you love me? Mm. Mm. I don't know what that is. It Rinia, thinking of you. I'm not sure that first letter. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. I think it might be an R. I'm just Zinia. Maybe it's a Z in um, cursive. Um, never heard of the flower. Anyway, Violet, forever true. Apple blossom, good fortune. Hyacinth, you are lovely. Tulip, your smile is just is like sunshine. Lily of the valley for sweetness and um, aster for patience. This is a design by Natalia Luneva. Um, oops, wrong window. Hang on. I apologize. And we'll see what else we've got. So Natal Natalia has designed that. Um, there's maybe 15 colours in it or less. Backstitching, simple cross stitch, and it goes for pages and pages and pages in the design. So they don't make it too small. Um, you could actually make it into like a bookmark. There's a, they're showing a picture at the bottom and it's literally just the bar of three and it, it actually works being that small or you could even have them individual and have it more like ornaments all right Sophie could you turn that down please Sophie Sophie oh, goodness. Um, now we have this little thing which is a little um oh, i don't know it's not really a sampler but it's a small table dressing picture frame a ball thing spring celebration table topper ornament black work and some cross stitch nice liz almond of the black work journey that is really quite pretty it's quite delicate and um yeah it's just nice and the variegation of the floss. It's actually, what is it using? Um, well, it's using DMC. It's just changing them. 
um, looks really good. And it would look really good in some of the variegated flosses if you're minded to do that. Now, Midnight Irises is like a mandala kind of piece if you like this kind of thing. Symmetrical, it's a garden inspired design. Um, again, it's quite simple. Uh, quite strong colours in it too. Oops, getting, sorry, into pattern there. Um, so yeah, um, nice and simple in its style. And it's designed by LaDonna Gosnell of LMG Creative Media. It's described as easy. And yeah, I would definitely say that it's fairly easy. It's a lot of straight lines. Ooh, this is pretty. This is called Contentment. And it's a black kitty. Texture reign supreme in this... Oh, holy cow. Wow. Okay. In this cross-stitch cross and ribbon embroidery project... Um, based on a quilt wall hanging by Christine Stansbury for Project House 360. This adaptation of the view from outside the window features a lovely garden of stitched blossoms. I'm looking at her roses and I'm just awestruck. It's wow. Uh, and then there's also flowers below the windowsill and everything else. And then you've got the cat licking its paws. Paw. That's gorgeous. So origi originally designed by Christine Stansbury, cross stitch adapt adaptation by K Judd for Trenway Silks. That's beautiful. Really, really beautiful. And lots of variety for you to try and yeah, get some skills. It's an intermediate. It's definitely not um, for new stitchers, but I don't know that you definitely, you necessarily have to get yourself overly worked up that you can't do it. It gives you ribbon embroidery techniques, how to do the French knot, how to do a straight stitch, straight, straight stitch, spiderweb woven rows, and the Japanese leaf stitch. So it's showing you where you put your needle in to get the ribbon to curl and do all those kind of things. So I don't think you need to stress. Maybe work on one outside of the border, and then when you think you've got the knack of it, then bring one in and do it in your work signs of spring so it is a robin i wasn't too sure if it was a robin the breast was not quite um punchy enough for what i'm used to with a robin uh, and it is magnolia which is what i was guessing because i have literally just stitched magnolia in my black work for the steady thread and um yeah that was the flower that i think i recently finished up on so there's that um, and the pattern goes over two pages. Um, okay. So there's the sampler that is a mystery stitch along. If you're interested in doing any kind of mystery stitch along, the third part is the next two down. So this one is, um, the April edition and it started off in February so you would need to get the back issue if this is something that interests you that's the mystery uh, mystery sal by Sullivan's where flowers bloom um, it's done on hand dyed cashel linen but I don't know how many parts um, are in it in total I'm sorry um, then we've got some floral fancies for Easter now, I know Easter is gone, but that doesn't really matter because we get stuff all year round when we're crafters. So Floral Fancy's Easter set. This is a Easter basket with a set of six beautifully stitched pieces. So you've got the um, kind of like a funnel basket for your eggs. And then you've got the little egg pieces as well. And then you've got the banner border to go around your basket. So it's, it's kind of nice. Um, so there's that. Uh, who is this by? This is by Shannon Grierson of Bobbin and Fred. So she's the designer for that. So it's, you know, it's kind of nice. Um, the little chicks are cute. Uh, oh, there's a chick with a shell over its head. Oh, it's all kinds of cute. 
Okay, and then you get two eggs. Okay, ooh, this is pretty. Wow, wait until you see this one. The, um, the colouring and depth in the wood is quite cool. And even in the stained glass, it, a little bit more thought went into this. It's not just flat colours for each of the sections. So they've variegated it. It's stained glass window, which is a budding trio of Easter lilies, stands in the foreground of the Easter cross in this design that will remind you of Easter's promise and power all year, lo uh, all year long. This is by Rhonda Nari of Tangled Threads and Things. That's gorgeous. I think that's really, really cool. Um, like how the variegation is there. Ultimately, that is seven and five eighths by five and three quarters. If you want stitch height, it's 106 by 80. So not huge. Um, you know, um, large photograph um, and you've got a frame and it's a really nice piece. And the lilies are stitched as well, but you've got that edging so that the whites kind of pop. Um, now we've got Easter Parade. Again, a little bit maybe oversimplified for my particular taste, but the variegation on the Easter is kind of cool. So it's Easter Parade. It's jaunty fun in your Easter celebrations. And that is by Nia Rind of Nia Cross Stitch. So there's a goose and there's a chicken and some eggs and a bunny. Just in case you were, you know, in any way confused about what Easter was about. Okay, now we've got a hare bunny. Well, it's a bunny. It's got short ears. That's how I was taught. No, hang on. Rabbits have longer ears than hares. No, yeah. Hares have got longer ears. Okay. Either way, it's standing up. It's all kinds of weird. Uh, it's not quite Peter Rabbitish, but he's got a backpack. It has a backpack um, with a basket full of eggs. Um, it's called Vintage Easter Bunny. And it's by Elizabeth Spurlock and Saving Grace's Fine Needle Arts is where she hails from. So there is um, that little sampler. So a lot of um, tent stitching on the background and uh, cross stitch on the front. So tent stitch, if you're not already aware, is basically half a cross stitch. So it's the first or it's the second half. Well, let me see. Um, no, interesting. I'm going to take you back to the picture. They haven't done it like I expect 10 stitch to be. 10 stitch is usually where you'd normally do your second leg for cross stitch, but they haven't done that in this one. They've actually done the first cross, which means that your cross stitch lies differently, which means that the bunny and the basket are actually jumping forward from the background, if that... So it's kind of giving that 3D effect. Maybe, in fact, if you were to do the sky in the... Well, it actually looks like cross stitch there. Maybe it's tent. I'll go down a bit and have a look. Um, if you were to do the sky say in the other direction it would give it more of a 3d effect now what does it suggest they do it's five by three the size of this um yeah it just says work half cross stitch so it's two over uh two over one or um two fl two strands and just do the first half mm, okay um, Alice in as the the Alice Weatherall nine, 1832 sampler is exploring Alice's world. That's the sampler sleuth article. Um, and it's showing Alice's sampler. You know, this is the kind of thing that I was expecting the school kid to maybe have come up with. That's really really hard to read. Um, no, and it's not even um, readable. No, well, okay, it's old English, so it's harder to read anyway because they spell and do things differently. Um, okay, if you like samplers, but if you want to know the history about this, then yes, absolutely. Um, it's saying here that the dark red orange is indicative of divine love, charity, life, war and martyrdom, and the purple hues may represent royalty and justice. 
Oogie Doogie. And, oh, here you go. Somebody has then reworked it, and now it can be read. So there's the modern sampler, and here's the old sampler. So there's the old one, and it's um, ripped and everything else. And here it has been reworked. How crisp it is when it's redone. Seekest thou for joys untainted to adorn thy youthful prime, make thyself with God acquainted, render all though what thou, thou hast to him. Okay. Okay. So there you go. 1832. Um, oops. Grabbed the wrong thing again. Um, it's actually preserved quite well. I'm a little bit impressed by that. Doesn't say how old she was. Uh, the article might say it within. That's by Deborah Fasano from Historic Handworks. So she has reworked all of that, which is really cool to have that heritage passed on if that's the kind of thing that interests you. Um, now, this is something very different. I don't know where I could get one of these crafty items, but it's a little metal pail. It's got the kind of pin, pin cushion type, maybe top, but you've got the um, borders, the catch around the button, all of that kind of heritage style funkiness. Uh, this is by Janet Bryant Groves of Crafty Cat Design. So very, very cool. Spring pretties is what that section is called. Uh, but it's showing the um, the top of the pail, showing shows you how to stick it down inside the pail and you could use it for anything, orts, whatever. Um, now, there's some Paddy's Day stuff here. It's green. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to slide. Okay, look at that, green. Um, and a little noodle case has the insidey bits. That's all kinds of cute. Some Paddy's needle set. It's Miss Cornu. It's by Kim Beamish. So if you like your um, Miss Cornu sets and your pin cushion sets or your needle holder sets, that's cool. Um, it's intermediate, so you're going to be doing black work, cross stitch, quarter stitches. There's some fractionals in there as well. All right, uh, another ad for the proper stitch and an Irish blessing. Okay, let's see what they've got for the Irish blessing see if this is for real or not okay twisted celtic inspired bands yes very celtic uh, perfect for any home personalize the color palette to match your decor or leave it as is to bring a bit of irish luck to your home Psst. make sure that you put a mistake in if you are um because then your soul won't get trapped just warning you now may your troubles be less and your blessings be more and nothing but happiness come through your door mm, okay i never heard of that but that's okay um, Ellen Hasbrook is the designer of that. Lovely and simple. Her font is really quite nice and crisp. I like that. Um, yeah, I like that one. It's on an A4 page. Then we've got a wedding. No, it's not a wedding sampler. It's actually a baby um, announcement. So you've got your baby your name, daughter of, and weight, and then you've got a couple of lambs and the cross. So if you're religious, that would be something to add. That is by uh, Virginie Lickens, Likens of Roland Designs for DMC. So that's, um, that's hers. All the alphabet, all the numbers. Um, Backstitch as well, so you can fit them in in various um, fonts. So that's good. Okay, now the next one coming up is called Honey Bunny. Honey Bunny. Two shy bunnies peek out from a sea of white daisies in this charming design. Aren't they cute? Now for something that small, they've actually done a really good job in everything. Um, that's really good. And then you stitch on a piece of um, lace edging. That's really cool. 
That is by Natalia Laneva. Again. I like that. That's really nice and simple. Again, intermediate. All right. Now, finishing instructions on that as well. How to do the tassels. And some stitching instructions. How to make certain stitches. As is always in the magazine. And then my Quaker style sampler is showing part one and part two so they've got masked off areas I'm not going to show you that um, and then I will show you the parade so everything that's within this issue is here in the project gallery so you can see the cash this one was quite cool with the um, ribbon extras and um, the bird and the magnolia was pretty good and um was there anything else oh we haven't got there yet oh aaron is in here all right so we've got an ad and well let's see aaron's gnomes are here okay so we've got an ad for oxygen machine we've got mill hill stuff and well, how did I miss the gnomes? How, seriously, how did I miss the gnomes? 55. How did I miss the gnomes? Oh my goodness. There's the Christmas sampler. What page? No, 63. How did, why didn't you tell me I missed the gnomes? Because we have to spend some time on Aaron's gnomes. It's the love theme. There's the baby thing. No, they've got it wrong. Okay, right. This would make sense. Right, they haven't changed the page for 55. So what's ended up happening is they've left in Aaron's picture of the gnomes when it's actually the spring sampler. Oops, editing faux pas there. All right, but that is the April issue. I hope you enjoyed flicking through that. Um, yes, again, if you would like to subscribe, this is not the only magazine that I do review. I do floss tubes I do at the end of the month and other videos. So if you would like to check out my videos um, or subscribe, ring the bell, get the notifications when I upload and you get to enjoy all my different kind of hobbies and tastes and see where we go. All right, thank you for joining me and I will see you around on the tubes. Bye for now. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. <laughs>